Welcome to the outcome of the 126th uh, IFAB board meeting. Uh, fantastic meeting. Uh, good to see our colleagues from the home associations and FIFA. Um, we had a good debate about a number of things. Uh, you know, in particular, we, we talked about goal line technology again, and we got you know absolute clarity from everybody that they're they're going to implement this when the technology is ready. Uh, we received a very thorough briefing from EMPA. Uh, the Swiss company who've been researching and conducting tests with eight companies to date. We can confirm today that two companies of the eight uh, received a, a very, very, very positive scores and go forward to second stage testing. Uh, Hawkeye and Goal Ref will now go into a phase two of testing to, to test the technology to destruction, I think it's fair to say. Um, vibrations and, and impact on the technology, different weather scenarios, impact of, of players in particular being around the technology. So further testing will be undertaken again with EMPA and we, and we absolutely expect um, that following the conclusion of those tests, provided that one or more of the companies fulfil the criteria and they're shown to be robust and, and uh, reliable and accurate that we will be passing that into the laws on the 2nd of July when we meet again in Kiev as a, for a special meeting of, of the IFAB. When will it be used? Uh, I think it's the same question as for the two additional assistant referees. I mean, it's, uh, it's not an obligation, it's an option. So whenever you can use, whenever you have the uh, capabilities to add two additional assistant referees or when you have the, uh, the, the capabilities to put in place uh, the goal line technology system, you do it. But it's not, uh, it's not an obligation. We, FIFA, will do it. We will do it in our senior competitions, the Confederations Cup, the FIFA World Cup, and why not the uh, Club World Cup. Um, but as an example, I don't think that it would make sense for us to do it in the under-17 tournament. No, no, I mean... In but the uh, So it's, it's the same. I mean, again, it's not mandatory. I mean, it's an option. I mean, it will be passed as, if you want to do it, you can do it. The, the Hawkeye system is a camera-based system. Um, the goal ref system, I think, uses both cameras and the technology in the ball to, 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 as a sort of magnetic field technology. But, it, I mean, it, it, it's irrelevant. If it works, then, then that's what's important. Um, there's quite a lot to think about for us in terms of you know how quickly we can implement it because it's not you know it's not simple plug and play you've got to actually install it in a stadium that sort of thing so whether it'll be in for next season I, I have to say I very much doubt um, and uh, so you know we'll keep working on that. Will it be the broadcaster or the clubs who are responsible for paying for the system uh, or will it be a <coughs> collaboration between the two? Can you tell us how it works? Will it be the, four, the fourth official who is actually looking at a monitor? Will it be somebody in the stands? How does it work? Yeah, yeah. Um, can I answer that in reverse? Because I think it might help to clarify. There is no monitor. There is no human intervention. There is simply a signal which is transmitted from the technology straight to the referee. It's a private signal to the referee. And there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an audio signal and a, and a signal to a watch within one second of the incident. That's a very key criteria. And that's what you know, the two technologies have passed and some of the others were, were perhaps not so good on. Um, so it's an entirely private moment, this, between the referee and the technology. And it's up to them then to decide whether they're awarding a goal. Okay, so th th there's no monitor, there's no human intervention. It's got nothing to do with with any broadcaster. It's a, it's a club-led, um, sorry, let me put it another way, it's a league-led decision, it's a competition-led decision. Um, it will be club infrastructure, they'd put it into their stadia, into their goal nets, their goal mouth, their, their stadia infrastructure, however it's implemented, um, and they'd be responsible for, for you know, running it and maintaining it. We talked about triple punishment, you may have heard reference to the, the, the three punishments for denial of a, a goal-scoring opportunity, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity. The, the, the proposal that was put forward was, was effectively withdrawn. Um, there was felt to be around the room too much confusion in terms of applying that law of the game. If you're, if you're a referee, you want the, any amendment to the law of the game to be easy to understand, easy to interpret. If you're a supporter of the game, you want it to be easy to understand and easy to interpret. We're still not there on that if I'm honest. Uh, 
and uh, so push back for further debate next year. And we also had a really, you know, really positive conversation about headscarves and particularly women, um, Muslim women wearing headscarves, hijabs. And uh, we've received a, a really strong presentation from Prince Ali. And um, we, we, again, we've, we've, we've approved that with one caveat, that we just need to understand that it's uh, safe. So that should be in play for next season. And, you know, that's, that's really important for us in terms of opening up the game to a, a, you know, a whole um, group of individuals who you know, potentially could be excluded from it and enables them to play football in, a, in an environment in which they feel comfortable. So that, that's brilliant. Um, and we also made uh, an amendment which I'm you know, personally delighted about in terms of the uh, grassroots, the ability for grassroots football to modify the number of substitutes and the way in which substitutes can roll on and off the pitch. Very, very important for us uh, in terms of the number of people playing the game and to, and to retain people playing the game. To be clear, we've agreed that we will, we will experiment with that for a couple of years. Um, everyone, everyone was happy to do that, so certainly we in, in the FA will now proceed to, to make that happen. The other one which, which didn't come up but I know is also being talked about is blood substitutions. So there's a, there's a, a view from the FIFA Medical Committee that actually a sort of 10 minute um, temporary blood substitution would be a good idea to allow proper care if someone's got to go and get stitched up you know, back in the, in the changing room. So I think there'll be a, a debate about substitute rules but next year. Thank you.